Hey there, Photo Universe. Okay, I'm in a gear reviewing mood, and uh, I just finished the DA10 review, and so now I thought it might be interesting to take a look at the SP Tamron, which is the um, screwdriver version, which I have in the Pentax mount, and the VC Ultra Silent Drive version that I have in the Nikon mount. Um, what's really interesting is I believe that both lenses are available in Nikon mount. Um, so there are some camera brands that you could choose one over the other, which is just interesting. In comparison, that's the size of the 17 to 50. So you can see these are big lenses. Um, the screw drive version is a little taller, a little thinner. The uh, ultra silent drive version with the VC in it, uh, vibration correction, is a little fatter and a little shorter. Just a hair, you know, in both uh, dimensions here. Um, the, uh, they both take 77 millimeter filters and uh, they're interesting. With the screw drive cameras uh, and the screw drive lens, it kind of depends on the camera how strong the uh, focusing motor is. Um, on some on professional level cameras like the K3, K5-2S, this lens is fast. Um, it makes a little bit of noise, it's not silent like the ultra silent, ultrasonic drive lenses, um, but it, it moves out, it's pretty quick. Uh, so, um, is, the, is the ultra silent drive a little faster? Yeah, just a hair. Um, having said that, they're both uh, adequately sharp. It really depends more on your camera in terms of the autofocus algorithms and things like that as, for, as far as total ultimate performance. Um, to, there's no question though, top of the line is the ultra silent drive uh, version. Uh, but just splitting hairs. So price wise, we're talking about 750 bucks versus uh, $1400. Maybe uh, 800, 750 to 800 for the screwdriver version, for about 1,400 dollars for the um, for the vibration correction. Uh, so uh, both lenses are equally sharp. The the one the the ultra silent drive VC version is a little smoother in implementation. One of the things I really like about the ultra silent drive lens is that uh, over the screwdriver lens is that when you are focusing, if you want to touch up your focus, you've got an instant override. Okay, so you can let the camera focus, and there it's focused. <laughs> Doesn't focus well with the lens cap on, right? So, okay, so you let the camera focus, there it's focused, and then you just override it to manually focus, instant manual mode, kind of. Um, I don't use it that often, but it sure is, uh, when you need it, it's nice to be able to do it in a hurry, right? Okay. And so that is kind of, is it worth twice the price? I don't know. Optically, they're about equal. Um, the the uh, $750 screwdriver lens, um, is, you know, might be a hair not as good as the VC, but really, honestly, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in terms of the output of the photographs. The uh, VC lens is a little bit better, but you're splitting hairs. It, we're at the point now where, you know, either it's good enough or it isn't, right? And these are all good enough. I can shoot them for anything I want to do with them. Um, now, with the, what, what is the problem with the uh, screwdriver lens in terms of touching up your focus, your manual focus? And this would be on any camera that uh, um, this uh, lens would fit on, right? So it focuses... All right, and there it's a little slower. You can see that. I mean, it's, it still works, but it's a little slower. But now if I want to go manual focus, I have to pull this clutch to get the uh, lens into a manual focus. And then I have to flip a switch on the camera. And now I'm in total manual focus mode. Um, I guess in a hurry, if you wanted to be in a hurry, you could let this whole wheel spin. Uh, there you go. But it slows down your autofocus. And then if you wanted to touch up, you got to flip a switch. And then, I mean, you're not, you, basically, you're, it, you're not doing that. It's an either or lens. You're either in manual focus or you're in autofocus. That's it. Um, and I would say that is the major drawback to this lens. Um, if you can put up with that, you can save 50% uh, of your money. Uh, it's the bang for the buck wise, the screw drive lens is phenomenal. Uh, it's really good. Um, one, one caveat also in the Canon mount, I believe they have a motor in the lens. Um, because obviously uh, none of the EOS cameras have a screw drive and uh, it wouldn't be an ultrasonic motor and I would probably shy away from that lens uh, if they make it because that motor is going to be really slow 
um, it's not going to probably be up to scratch. Uh, if I were shooting Canon, there's no question in my mind I would absolutely get the uh, ultrasonic drive because that's what that whole system is based around, really. Um, in Nikon, surprisingly, the Nikon screw drives um, are fast. Um, most of my primes are screw drives, and, uh, and they work great. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of the pros are still shooting the 80-200 to Nikkor, which you can have that lens for about 900 bucks, and you know you can drive nails with that lens. It's a proven, proven track record of uh, photojournalists using it all over the world. I'm not sure it's as sharp. I mean, I, the Tamron might be sharper. I know the VC is. Uh, the Tamron screwdriver might be sharper, but that 80 to 200 is a is a heck of a lens. I think it's about 900 thousand dollars. It might have gone up to 1,200 or something. I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, but I know a lot of pros in Nikon land are still shooting that 80 to 200 because it's really small, it's really compact, has a proven track record of durability and reliability. Um, so that might be a way to go if you're shooting Nikon. Um, that's another option. Um, so having said all that, I can't, uh, if you're shooting Pentex, there's only one game in town for a 7200. Ah, you get there's the Sigmas. But I think the Tamron's a better value, and I think it's a sharper, it's sharper and it's a better value. The ultrasonic drive Sigma, if they make it, whatever HSM is what Sigma calls it, it's a great lens. It's kind of spendy. I mean, you're up to about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for that lens. I don't know, maybe more. Um, and Sigma comes out with new versions. It's hard to keep track of where they're at. Um, some are better than others. Um, I think that the uh, the Tamron. Obviously, I've got the lens right here. I think it's a great match. It really works well on a K3 or K52s or K5 or whatever. In Pentax, it's really kind of. You know, um, you just use it in autofocus mode. And it's a really sharp lens, nice lens to have for Pentax. Um, okay, but obviously for Nikon, I went with the VC ultrasonic drive, and I picked this because I would have went with the um, I would have went with the uh, 70-200 to 2.8 VR lens, the Mark II. It's 2,400 bucks, and this lens was a thousand dollars cheaper. And I, you know, I've had the 70-200, like I said. 70 to 200 to 8 VR, and quite frankly, um, the Tamron. I chose this lens to, to replace that lens because, and, and I'm, I'm happy, I'm satisfied. So, okay, that's it with Photo Universe. Hope this review helps someone. It's kind of all over the map, but if you're thinking about a 70 to 200 lens and you're thinking about the uh, SP screw drive lens over the VC ultrasonic drive lens, and money's a, a, a not, you know a, a, an issue. Um, Get get the get the SP lens. It is professionally sharp. There's a I mean there's a few areas where things get a little goofy, but not there's no deal breakers here. This you could lend, use this lens all day long. This lens is better than any lens we had 20 years ago. So all right, that's it with Freddie Harris. Have a good one and thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like it. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.